Welcome to BB's Bookshelf. Today we're reading She Caught the Light by Katherine Lasky. More than 100 years ago in the city of Dundee, Scotland, a very smart baby girl was born. Her name was Wilhelmina. They called her Mina. Her father was a carver and a gilder. He carved picture frames and gilded them in gold leaf. But he also had a hobby, making photographs. He and his wife knew their baby was bright because she was so curious. Even when she was very little, she loved watching her father polish his sheets of silver plate with special chemicals to catch the light for his photographs. Mina would follow her father into the dark room to see the magic as the faces of a family portrait emerged on the plates, melting out of the darkness like stars in the night. And Mina had as many questions as there were stars in the sky. Why do the chemicals work? How does the light get onto the paper? Can I do this someday? When Mina was seven years old, her father died. Her mother and her brothers tried to keep the shop going but failed. Everyone had to go to work, including Mina, when she became a bit older. So when she was just 14, she began teaching school. When Wilhelmina was 20, she married James Fleming. They sailed from Dundee to Boston, and then, shockingly, he disappeared. Mina was left all alone and friendless in a strange city, or almost alone, for she soon discovered she was expecting a baby. Wilhelmina had to find a job. On top of one of the highest hills in the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts, there was a building with a big dome, an observatory. It was the Harvard College Observatory for studying the stars. Professor Pickering was the director and lived in a connecting house with his wife, Elizabeth. Wilhelmina became their maid. She dusted, she swept, she scrubbed, and she asked many questions. Elizabeth and Edward Pickering sensed that Wilhelmina was smart. One day, the professor was complaining to his male assistant about their astronomical calculations. The assistant's job was to study the spectra, or the rainbow of colors of starlight, recorded by the telescope's spectroscope. But the assistants were making mistakes. The professor was upset. My Scottish maid could do better, he thundered at them. Mrs. Pickering overheard this and thought, yes, why not? So she urged her husband to give Mina a chance. Mina had learned a lot just by being in the presence of Professor Pickering, although she was his housekeeper and not his student. She knew he was exploring not only where the stars were in the sky, but what the stars were made of. She knew that the elements in stars, carbon, oxygen and nitrogen were the very same ones that make up the earth and even the human beings on earth. The hidden, the unknown, and the unseen fascinated Wilhelmina. This was the secret language of starlight. Mina was excited. She learned that when the light of stars passed through the prism of the spectroscope, it blossomed into rainbows of color. Glass plates recorded the spectrum, but not in color. There was no such thing as color photography back then. That's a nitrogen atom, a carbon atom, and an oxygen atom. Do you see their different numbers of electrons? On the plate, the rainbow of each star's color was filled with dark vertical lines. These lines made a pattern that was the key to the mysteries of the stars. By studying the lines, the secrets of a star's light were revealed, the chemical elements that made up the star itself. For example, the lines that indicate hydrogen were in the red, blue, and violet parts of the spectrum. From star to star, the rainbow varied because each star was made up of slightly different elements. As the whirls of lines on a human being's 
fingerprint differ from person to person, these vertical lines became the fingerprint of the stars. It was as if each star had a different personality, and this was what puzzled and excited Mina the most, the differences. The lines indicating the elements within the band were like fingerprints across the glass plates. Mina wanted to sort them out like puzzle pieces. These little pieces of Heaven's puzzle. She began to classify them into an order that would show how one star differed from another. To capture the light of these stars, you needed to use a telescope. But the most unfair thing was that Wilhelmina and later other women astronomers were never allowed to look through a telescope for health reasons. Women, the men said, were too fragile. In the unheated ob observatory dome, they might catch cold. So what the women saw were plates of glass plates that recorded the spectra. The plates were removed from the telescope spectrograph and like film were put in a chemical bath to develop. Gradually the lines would appear. It reminded Mina of the magic that transpired in her father's dark room back in Dundee, Scotland. Wilhelmina was becoming very good at sorting out all of these lines, but each day her belly grew larger with her baby. Wilhelmina was exhausted. She decided to go back to Scotland to give birth and get help from her mother. So she set sail. Once home, she gave birth to her baby, a boy whom she named Edward. But the stars called to Mina, even as she rocked her baby far away in Dundee. And like ghostly charms in the night, the rainbow of starlight floated through her dreams. She had to return to Boston. By the time she returned, Professor Pickering was so impressed with Mina's talents that he had begun to hire more women to compare the light of stars. But it was not always the secrets of starlight that she found on those glass plates. One day, Wilhelmina was peering at a plate and saw something very intriguing. She described it as a swirling cloud of gases buried in the constellations of Orion. The light from this mysterious object had to have traveled over 1,000 years to reach Earth. The location within the Orion constellation was known to be a stellar nursery, a place where stars are born. The cloud of gases she saw resembled a horse's head. It reared up, blocking the stars behind it. Do you see that? No one had seen this before, and Mina's discovery became known as the Horsehead Nebula. It was important because it would give astronomers clues about how stars are born and about the composition of our own home galaxy, the Milky Way. Mina knew that this was a significant discovery, but more discoveries would follow and more women came to the observatory. These women became known as the human computers. They were paid 25 cents an hour. The men were paid many times more. It was unfair. Mina complained to Professor Pickering. Mina wondered if he ever thought about how she had a home of her own to keep and a child to raise. She helped her son Edward with his homework every night, put bandages on his skinned knees, played board games with him, made fudge, and on top of all these motherly tasks, she decoded the light of the stars and the secrets of the universe. Wilhelmina was not simply catching the light and sorting the stars above the Harvard Observatory, but also decoding the glass plates sent to her from another observatory in Peru. There were new starry treasures to be discovered in the Southern Hemisphere, stars like the demon star, Algol. Algol was called a winking star as its brightness often changed. Wilhelmina made a small pair of dolls in honor of Algol's winking. One of the dolls was dressed in bright clothes, the other was dressed in darker ones. Making dolls based on stars was Mina's hobby. She gave them to children in hospitals. 
but most of her time was spent sorting and classifying the stars and cracking the secret code of their light. Her father, back in Dundee, had created portraits of families. Now she was creating a portrait of the universe that astronomers would use for over a century. In 1898, Wilhelmina was appointed curator of astronomical photographs. She was the first woman to be given an official title at Harvard University. Wilhelmina Fleming believed that the universe, with its billions of stars, was a riddle. It was a mystery waiting to be solved. She captured the light to help solve that riddle, and by the end of her life, she had classified over 10,000 stars. The end.